Hello and welcome to another episode of Soul Snacks. Little videos about big ideas. We are talking today about conflict and disagreement. Should we avoid it or embrace it? 70% of people avoid difficult conversations at work, according to a survey by Bravely. I've experienced this firsthand. Recently, my friends strongly disagreed with an idea that I proposed on a chat group. I hated that they argued against my idea so strongly. I felt attacked. This is the same reason that I avoid disagreements at work. If things get too heated, I will often favor harmony over getting my point across. After all, haven't we all heard that we should never hurt other people? It turns out that conflict and disagreement have several positives. According to Leanne Davy, author of You First, inspire your teams to grow up, get along and get stuff done. Conflict allows teams to better deal with difficult situations, synthesize diverse perspectives and create better thought out solutions. When we open our ideas to debate, we are having intellectual humility and allowing our ideas to be improved through rebuttal. No wonder diverse teams with heterogeneous perspectives seem to thrive in study after study over homogeneous teams with little disagreement. Katie Shonk from the Harvard Negotiation Project talks about the three types of workplace conflict. First, there's task conflict, which relates to things like who does what, how to approach a problem. Second, there's relationship conflict, which arises from differences in personality and style. Finally, there's value-based conflict, which arises from differences in core beliefs such as religion. Julia Dar, a partner from BCG, gave an incredible TED talk about how we can disagree constructively. She said that we should separate arguments from identity, that we should separate ideas from the person making them. Further, she found that the best debaters and influencers don't start by making the extreme palatable. Rather, they first establish common ground and a shared reality. This helps the other person open up to what else you might be saying. She also says that listening to another person's voice humanizes their ideas, which proves that we should not have our toughest arguments over email or chat groups, but rather in person. So we should be listening to understand the other person's viewpoint, debating ideas rather than identities, and finding common ground. Sorted? But these are our ideas that someone is hating on. Imagine that we are an artist and someone calls a sculpture we made a piece of junk. It's very likely that we would take that personally. Aren't our ideas and thoughts our art? Like the sculpture, they came from us. Here, I love what Frederick Imbo has to say. He says that our ego makes us feel that someone is not treating us right when they disagree with us or ignore us. We need to start by not taking things so personally. It's not about us, it's about them. If someone is being rude, maybe the topic is very personal for them. We judge others by the labels we put on them, but ourselves by our intentions. For example, if our colleague gives our boss a card, we think they're a suck up. But when we do it, it's because we are caring and nice. We need to examine the stories that we have running in our minds. We need to make the space for understanding and looking at the other person's intentions. But what about when something someone says hurts us because there is some truth to it? When the YouTube videos I make are criticized, it might be because I haven't yet mastered making good YouTube videos. Perhaps we can show ourselves a little empathy in these situations. So when we feel something is about us, it's okay to be sad. Let's allow the emotion to run its course rather than being scared of it or avoiding it. We'll come out the other end, probably wiser. Let's summarize. Disagreement and conflict is uncomfortable, but it can be powerful because it can help us grow and refine our ideas and outcomes. We should disagree constructively and separate ideas from identities. To disagree effectively, it's worth starting by listening to understand and finding common ground. However, if someone disagreeing with us hurts us, let's remember that it's generally not personal. In the instances when it is personal, let's show ourselves a little empathy. See you next time.